All right. Welcome to our EDM conversation. Um, so I will share my browser. So first of all, yay, uh, IB user lose it is in the sent to RFC editor state. So we are done with this modulo off 48 stuff in RFC editor comments, but um, this is out the door. So we've we've done something in the group, which is great. Um, I'm really happy with how we were able to resurrect that. And I was able to close one of our earliest GitHub issues of should we do something with use it or lose it? So whoo. Um, the things that we wanted to talk about today are essentially, you know, what do we think it makes sense to do next? Because this was just kind of a small first step to look at what are the extensibility mechanisms mechanisms we have, but there are different ways in which work can spill over from that, both in the kind of theoretical extensibility angle, as well as the practical, how do we get deployments out there? How do people know what the different deployments are to interop with and actually make their stuff work? Um, so first we're gonna start with Charles's document which I have pulled up here, the fine code proposal. So, uh, Charles, do you want to take us through that? I don't know if you had slides or anything. We can just... Sure, I, I actually did, I, or, or I do. I put together a few slides, so let me... Uh, Share it. Let me go ahead and show that. So, so yeah, the, the idea about uh, um, making code easier to find, uh, certainly code is um, important um, to a lot of IETF efforts. I'm, I'm most familiar with uh, the things around the hackathon we've been doing to try to put more emphasis on running code, but, you know, it shows up in a lot of places and uh, which is great, but um, finding code is that's you know, related to drafts can often be quite challenging. And so this has been a topic of discussion, not only in the EDM list, but I think it was on the working group chairs list and maybe a couple others. And I just tried to uh, capture some of those thoughts um, in a draft to make it easier for us to, to discuss and hopefully make some progress on making things better. So, so yeah, the, the general idea is that there, there is this code, uh, it exists, we're doing things to try to make sure that, that there's more of it. But, but really, um, even just of that code that's already out there to make it easier for uh, those who know about it to identify it as such. And then for those who are interested in working in a certain area um, to help them like realize that this code exists and, and be able to find it. Uh, that's really the goal here. So this code, um, at least from my perspective, it, it can exist in a lot of efforts. I think some people, when they think of code and, and internet drafts and standards, they're thinking um, of, of perhaps like reference implementations or, or certainly more direct things, like here's a client or a server that actually implements the protocol we're standardizing. And, and that's fantastic. I mean, it's wonderful when you have those types of things. But I think there's a lot of other things too that are very useful, um, even like utilities that help you um, identify it and, and find the traffic um, uh, when someone's using that, you know, a protocol and there's a bunch of network traffic and you just want to analyze it or do some pro post processing on, on the, mm -hmm. um, say those, um, uh, those traffic flows, uh, anything that's going to help you with implementing, adding support for a protocol. Um, and th sometimes these things are very mature and they're well known and a lot of people have been using them and they've gotten better over time. A lot of times, like in the example of the hackathon, it's quite common for just a quick proof of concept to be thrown together. That's really very targeted toward, hey, there's this aspect of this protocol or, you know, this idea we have, and we just want to be able to um, prove or, or disprove uh, that, that it actually works. So, and, 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 you know, a lot of this code may not be of any value uh, anymore. So knowing what code's there and the state it's in is uh, it, it's often difficult. So just to think about some requirements for code to be generally useful um, for the IETF efforts, 
I think, first of all, that you know, this shouldn't be a, this is pretty much a no brainer. It needs to be publicly available. Um, I say preferably open source because. Um, obviously, if it's open source, that makes it so much easier for us to share, collaborate on it, um, people to understand the licensing behind it, and then make sure, you know, their company's not going to have any issue with them contributing to it. Um, however, uh, code that is publicly available that, that's not open source, um, we, we have had cases of people working on that in the hackathons, and, and that can be good, too. Um, so. Uh, but, you know, it's certainly no matter what, it needs to be publicly available. Otherwise, it's not very useful. And I think this is pretty, the last one. Well, it's pretty obvious too, right? It needs to be at least somewhat related to work that's going on in the IETF. Um, and, uh, and this could be any of those cases that we talked about earlier being very direct or more of an indirect relation. So, you know, there, there has been an emphasis on running code for a long time. So there's a lot of things that already exist that I think we can leverage this um, implementation status that right that was defined or is defined in, in an RFC. Um, that was really defined with, for the purpose of stating hey, here is the state of uh, known implementations of this draft. And, and the idea there was that it would maybe lend a little more credibility to what was being defined or, or help um, uh, prove, I guess, that that the idea was was more baked, right? Because people have actually implemented it. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have a life. That section doesn't necessarily have a life beyond uh, the draft going to RFC. <laughs> um, the GitHub Working Group or, or Git Working Group that actually created to come up with some best practices around how working groups can can use GitHub and Git to um, to work on on drafts. So. You know, we have that, and then, of course, we have the hackathon that I've mentioned, which just, you know, results in more emphasis and, and generation, I would say, of, of code. So, so we do have some things. So the proposal here is to put a little bit more structure around using those things and yet have it be very lightweight and just come up with a process that uh, maybe at least moves the needle forward a little bit in terms of making code easier to find. So the first thing would be to, to set up a repo um that uh, follows the recommendations that came out of, of the git working group right and there's a couple rfcs there about about how to do it about how to set up a, a repo for an internet draft that you're working on so when you're working on a draft i'd say you should you should do that and then in the readme um you can include some information about code that you know it, um, and this could just be a pointer to another git repo or you know, um, it could be located wherever, but some information that, you know, the readme would be the thing that people would look at to say, okay, here's this internet draft that's being worked on within the IETF, and here are some links to some code. Um, then the data tracker has a mechanism that exists where you can associate a GitHub org or a Git, GitHub repo um, with an internet draft. And, and that would be a good thing to use. This is where you can put the link to your, your GitHub repo so people can find the README very easily. The implementation status that we mentioned before, um, th th that's a great thing too. So you can also put the same exact information, basically the link to your README in the implementation status section. And that way the, the README is sort of the, the source of truth. You don't need to maintain this information in multiple places. And then in the great case that you actually get an RFC and it's published, um, we want this information to live on and, and also for us to be able to change it if we need to. So then one suggestion, which I thought was really good, was we could make use of the inline errata uh, functionality that we have. And, um, and through that, you can actually add references to, to code, um, which may just be a link to the same readme, but Maybe later on you want me to change it. So this um, inline or rather would allow you to do that without having to republish the RFC, for example. So that's just the very simple proposal that was that I laid out. Um, I tried to follow those practices with a draft that I have that's in the works. It's in the Schmoog work working group about how to run a, a hackathon. And uh, maybe I'll just briefly 
show that you can see kind of how, how simple this is. Um, oh, you're not seeing that. Hold on. Nope, can't see it. So let me change what I'm sharing here. Now we want to share. This. And by the way, Charles, if you yeah. don't mind, a comment on the errata stuff. Yeah. The errata is pretty heavy and annoying for the ISG. I mean, <laughs> we are oh. basically pushing the duty to somebody else, and but that's okay, right? Okay. Well, we can see uh, if there's a better way to to capture it. Um, that's that's great. Um, Okay, so here's the data tracker, and I pulled this up to show how you can add this additional information, additional resources, I guess it's called, uh, associate this with your draft. So, you know, and this is my, my draft on uh, running a hackathon in, in the data tracker. So now if I click on this link, um, hopefully I'm, yeah, I'm still sharing the right thing, <laughs> um, you can see the draft in GitHub, and, and this is set up as outlined by the uh, uh, the Git working group, you know I just followed that process basically to set it up. So you can see my README here, uh, which makes it easy to find the various uh, versions of the draft. And then I just added this section here about code, and said uh, you know you can go to the IHF Hackathon GitHub org, which is where some of the the projects in the Hackathon exist. And then in addition to that. <clears throat> going to the uh, the wiki pages for each of the individual hackathons. Now, this isn't really an ideal example because I'm kind of covering the entire hackathon in this draft, but I think that at least it shows the idea that the README would be the place where you point people to um, the one or more projects that have uh, running code associated with the draft. And so... Chad that's I'm it. pretty sure that there are cases where there are two competing implementation of the same RFC, one mm -hmm. by the authors and one by somebody else that believes it's better or whatever. Because until now, the repo and the data tracker requires the working group chair or the authors to modify it. So how can a competing by a whatever company thing put, put this, their code there? Well, you know, I think one way to go about that would be, you know, like, let's say I was running into that problem that I had a competing implementation that the draft author wasn't necessarily super fond of. I think I would probably um, send a pull request to add a link to my my implementation with a little bit of information about what it is and a link to it uh, to the readme and then. Yeah, maybe I can't update mm -hmm. the draft because I don't have write privileges, but at least there's kind of that trail where you can see me submitting it. And then, you know, the, the, the working group should be monitoring that. So if you have an author who is screening implementations that, that they don't like, well, that's kind of like rejecting um, contributions to the draft that you don't like. You need to, you know, have the work group involved. And if the working group thinks the implementation's junk, then then that's different, um, and, and then so maybe it doesn't belong there. But I think you can handle updates to the README very much like you would handle updates to the working group draft. Yeah, but working group at some point of time are closed as well. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sometimes working group are closing, right? Oh, so once the working group closes, um, does anyone check any? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So then. Then what happens to the README after that? Um, yeah, I mean, cer certainly it should be maintained, but how we enforce that or how we make sure that that happens, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it should should be updated over time. That's a very good yeah, that's good. point. Yeah. That, that, that's a good point, because what I was thinking initially here was maybe the best solution is, uh, so uh, I, I've been a big proponent of using GitHub in all my working groups. It's just mm -hmm. way simplifies everything. And what we do is once documents are adopted, um, they <clears throat> like they get a, uh, a GitHub repository in the working group uh, organization. 
And so one thing here is, um, you know, especially because of um, Eric's comment about, you know, people disagreeing in the working group, you could imagine having a like implementations of this draft working uh, a GitHub repository in the working group organization that only the chairs have edit access to. Anyone else can create PRs. And so the authors of the draft don't have any more access. Well, or even there, but like the idea is that that repository would carry like working group consensus, just like the, you know, the working group documents mm -hmm. do to some extent. And then the draft just even in the draft itself has an implementation section that says for details that are up to date about the implementation, visit this GitHub repository. And so once the RC is published, it is immutable. You don't need any errata because that link stays true. The, but the problem is then uh, because that, then the you know ownership and the access control of that list goes to the working group chairs. And so if someone shows up later and says, hey, I wrote up an implementation, it's the chair's responsibility to say, yep, this looks like a reasonable implementation. I'll add it to the list. I, I, we don't need to say which one's best. We just say that it's there. Um, and but But then what does happen if the working group gets closed? Yeah. Who who becomes the change controller? Like if you look at uh, other ITF things, our kind of two options are we kick it to the ISG, which I th I'm sure Eric loves the idea, yeah, or sure. the other one is uh, IANA. Uh, if you look at Experts. what we do today, mm -hmm. uh, like we have IANA registries where the working group that created them has been closed. So you could imagine having the list of implementations maintained by IANA, though. Uh, yes, the look on Tommy's face is very correct. Like the uh, like, I just sent something to get a new quick version added to the list. It's been weeks. I don't know what's going on. Like, I, I, I is not the simplest process. Um, but yeah, we would need a change asset controller. You know, I, I was expecting you to kind of go a different direction with the suggestion there when you said Iana of like how you know in Iana registries you have designated experts which live beyond a working group chair, and so. You could essentially say, and you know, oftentimes experts are chairs or authors, and you you could just have, you know, a designated GitHub maintainer for the area that just takes over the working group GitHub, and you know, if the ISG gets mad at them, then you know, they choose a different person to maintain it. But you just say, all right, yeah, you can be here and keep updating PRs if people have them. Or, you know, do maintenance mode without a formal working group, but still have a GitHub. I, I like that because that allows to evolve this um, during and past the lifetime of the working group. And it also gives an appeals process that's simple because you would say if for some reason, either, you know, that person just stops responding to their email or they're being difficult and they don't want to add your implementation because they don't like you, uh, you can, it says, you know, you appeal to the security ADs, for example, if it's a security related topic. And we know that we will have security ADs for all of time. Yep. Um, so on the, just kind of focusing on the kind of like this, you know, how would the GitHub part work? Um, We, you know, we do see, as you point out, I think already, Charles, in your document, like there are examples of people doing this. Like, Quick has it on the wiki page for the base draft repository. Um, yeah. Yeah. And within HTTP, we have different uh, information often stuffed in other repositories um, within the working group. One, there's, you know, we have at, we have a specific wiki repo that has a wiki attached to it um and i imagine other people have different ones so part of this is just having like what we did with the git working group to begin with like what is a uniform way of doing it what's a template okay. that you can take of like here's an easy place to put it like you know i know with um some newer working groups like within add the chairs just kind of said all right let's just take the template of what you know, other working groups have and just try to copy and do the best practices. Sure. And that's great. But like that template and stuff doesn't include anything about implementation tracking or wiki status. Um, so if we look at, you know, specifically where to do it, putting it on a draft report. So you can't just have a wiki on a 
what, what do you call the thing that's above repository within GitHub? An org. An org. Yeah, you, you can't have a wiki on an org. So you have to have a wiki or something on a repo. So probably we just say, you know, there should be either a, like what we see, like a working group materials or a wiki repo or a implementations repo. Um, like that, yeah. And that's just like a common place to put it, which then individual read, I guess the individual readmes would just take you to that of saying like, Hey, if you want to find out more about the implementations this working group is doing, go to the wiki. Um, that could work. Um, yeah, and then I think you would, um, it seems to me you, you kind of have to have one kind of process for individual drafts before they're adopted by a working group. And then once they're in a working group, they should follow the working group practice, which the more, like if we can have a, a uniform working group practice, that really makes things very easy. And, and maybe by starting with a template so that, you know, most working groups do the same thing. I'm sure you're still going to have some outliers though that do things a little differently. Oh, sure. Um, and then the other challenging thing is the one Eric mentioned once the working group closes, but I think we, we could leverage some of the yeah, things we've done in the past for um, having experts or, you know, a place to go to when you have a question about an RFC for which there's no longer a working group. We could probably yeah. leverage similar mechanisms. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, besides taking notes, um, kind of translate these into some of our own EDM GitHub issues, just so we can keep track of the ideas of, you know, things we can work on. So I think one that seems to be coming out of this is, you know, define a standard place to track implementations in, like, working group GitHubs. Um, and so, for example, that can be a wiki in a specific repo. GitHub. Um, so that seems to be one thing that we could do that's really related to, you know, mainly the active work of, you know, as I'm doing this, how am I saying, hey, I'm working on this too. How do we maybe do interop after that or whatever? And then there's this separate one, which I th think kind of falls into our larger maintainability theme of, you know, like, what happens when you close your working group um, and what happens to your GitHub? Um, so at least with working group mail lists, right? Sometimes a working group email list will stick around for, for years. Yeah, it's typically the case, yeah. It's closed relatively quickly, but then it, it, in my experience, at least it falls over to like the area list. Uh, and that's where you would then go. Uh, Eric, I think, sorry, I stopped over you there. No, no, no. I mean, typically we keep the mailing list open when we close a working group. Now, if there is no more subscriber to the mailing list, nobody will notice. But I mean, the default in all cases is the ISG. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't there. expect thousands of traffic, though, right? Right. Right. Yeah, so I, th that, I think those are two. Yeah, go ahead, Derek. I, I would, again, uh, regarding this second class of competing implementation, I would hate to get appeal on this. Yeah, no. So we need to maybe find a way that may be more flexible on this. I don't know. Yeah, I would I mean, prefer I mean, to no, to I mean, note if it's in working group chair control. I would hope that you know ISG has appointed chairs who are not super discriminatory against certain implementers or groups of people, and they aren't going to be like, "I'm not going to list your thing." Like, and if you have that problem, you probably have a bigger problem than just what they're doing on their GitHub. It's also in how they run their meetings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I go to a working group, but which is a nightmare. Is DNSSD, the chairs are completely dumb, David, right? Just in case you <laughs> did not notice. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, again, right? The don't make um, my problem is a big, big, big thing, but we need to think about it. And, and, and by the way, I was, when I was reading this, uh, the abstract charts, I was thinking about more 
like what about uh, adding in all the code itself because we got google right kind of a template in your python c or whatever before code that make it easily recognizable but the google uh -huh. and the other being of the world yeah that's a good point yeah something you add to your code uh to say this is my this is this RFC. <laughs> yeah, I mean RFC if you type RFC, but, but maybe I, I mean, mm. just an idea for me, right? So well, yeah, 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 at a minimum, you know. So so let's say I've had some some code and it's associated with my internet draft, you know. So in in, in the internet draft, the data tracker, right? Trying to find a way to make it easy to find the code, and you want the reverse to be true too, right? To say that um, yeah. Yeah, and, and the other point, if it appears on data tracker, um, maybe I'm getting paranoid, right? But I've been burned. Does it mean that the IATF LLC endorsed the code? Because if somebody replaces, you get a nice implementation of whatever, let's say quick, and then replace quick by a quick with a backdoor, and people trust the IATF trust, that is mm -hmm. correct. I'm sorry, I'm paranoid, right? But yeah. Um, At some point of time, legal needs maybe to be involved. And again, I don't want to break stuff, right? Yep. Yeah, I, I get that. Although the 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 information you have in the data tracker would it, it it's uh it's sort of indirect, right? Because you your pointer in the data tracker would be pointing you to not. V1 implementation, it's pointing you to a place, it's pointing you to the place where you find out about all the implementations. Maybe there's only one, but, uh, you know, you would have that level of interaction. Which yeah, anyway. be... But, but even if it is in, you know, the GitHub wiki or something, there should probably be some standard boilerplate disclaimer of like, this is not endorsed. Um, mm -hmm. That and have legal people check that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and those are things that are, are good for the IETF to do in general or, or for, you know, maintainers of code to do in general to let people know the status of, of your code. So we kind of have a level of expectation of, hey, what am I getting with this? Or is this, uh, is this maintained? What if I want to contribute? All those things, right? They're just good practices for, for collaborating on code. Yep. Cool. So I'm adding those notes to our issue about a standard place to track things. Yeah, so I think that's those are both kind of very interesting directions we can go in. Um, the other bit I wanted to jump back to, Charles, of what you were saying was talking about, you know, like, oh, we have the inline errata, which um, that's a interesting kind of hack around this. So, but it's a good point of, you know, like, hey, you know, if we have this good implementation status, and I'm someone who's not coming into the world just through reading drafts in progress or you know, I'm not going into data tracker much or I'm not going to your GitHub. I'm just reading the RFCs. Is, you know, is there a way that I should be able to discover this stuff? Um, so first, you know, Eric, you're reviewing a lot of documents. How many documents by the time they get to you actually have this implementation status section? Like, how often are people really doing this BCP? You're muted. It's, it's mainly people from the routing area. Okay. Because many working groups in the routing area need to have two competing, or two interoperable implementation before publication. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and sometimes you have a few of them, yes. Yeah. But yeah. I would say one third maximum. And Miria, you have been but, the IZ longer yeah. than me, right? So, yeah, I I agree. Um, but I mean, those get removed and publication, right? You're aware of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we, we mentioned that earlier, but I guess you know to start with, you know, but it's, how much so, are people even doing them to begin with? Yeah. Um, maybe it's one third, or maybe it's even less because it's not all of the documents are actually protocol specifications, right? So in a lot of cases, we don't have a code. Fair. Um. Yeah. But of things that are part of, okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I think um, 
you know, maybe I'm just kind of focused on, on what I see in the hackathon, but a lot of what happens there are not, I mean, they, they shouldn't be really even necessarily in an implementation status section of the draft because they're not an implementation of, of the draft, really. I mean, it's not like um, it's showing you, it, it, it doesn't cover the whole draft. It's maybe um, like I2 NSF, right? There's been work on the drafts that are from that working group to illustrate how to, to use some of the protocols that are there in the context of say OpenStack or, and, and I think if you go, you'd find some interesting things, but I wouldn't say that it's, uh, it's a reference implementation of, of, of the draft. It's just uh, a draft that's adding some support for that protocol, uh, at least for certain use cases, which is useful, right? But it's yeah. not, it's not the, a reference implementation um, in that sense. I, I guess though that type of thing, you know, if I had people in my working group doing that, like, it would be nice to capture that somewhere in this wiki about implementations. You're like, someone that could say, hey, you know, people did this work. And if you want to go kind of go back through the history, like what we can see with Quick of like, here are all the implementation status checkpoints. And these people did this much of this one and this much of that one. You know, besides just saying, hey, who can I interrupt with? You can say, which parts of the spec, like, did anyone implement migration? Do you know, like, did anyone try these parts out? It's, it's a useful thing. Um, so, you know, I guess if we, if we have this common place, um, like in a GitHub or something, the implementation status section of your draft could just point to that and like, look over here if you want to see that. Um, and then you don't need to worry about is, is this particular one appropriate to list? Um, so I think it's important to keep in mind that <clears throat> there are different requirements, um, people looking for code. If you are actually a protocol developer and you're in the discussion, right? You just want to like interrupt, you want to check some parts of specification and so on. But if later on somebody reads an RFC, they actually might may, may be looking for an implementation that they can just take and use, or yep. they might just want to look at code so they can implement their own code. So there are slightly different needs and slightly different requirements on the code as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, what I was wondering is, you know, I, I think it's probably wrong to abuse the actual inline errata, but, you know, at, at the risk of going down the living documents track, you know, can you, could, could we imagine something similar in which someone with the right authority be that? The working group that produced the RFC or the ISG can say, all right, you can have an in, you know, some inline marker or link out to, you know, more info about implementations or, you know, something right. like that. And, and not, it doesn't have to be a full living document type thing, but it's just a way to say, hey, here's an RFC. By the way, if you want to learn more about how this is actually deployed, click here, and then you can go to their GitHub wiki. And that can get updated and changed just like an errata could. Um, it just gets displayed when you view the RFC. Yeah, so um, we have metadata for all of the RFCs. So there's like what's in the XML, which is kind of written in stone. You can never change it, yep. but there's also metadata for all the RFCs. And in, we, we display those metadata or we use this metadata in the data tracker, but we also display them in other parts. Um, so like with link to the error term and so on, that's part of the metadata. And those are changeable. But of course, the metadata don't show up in the text version or in the PDF or whatever. And they don't show up in like the HTML, the new HTML versions either? No, they do. I mean, if you go to it's typically what's above, right? Updated by, obsoleted by. You don't see them in the text on the PDF version, right? So, right, I, I guess, I need to find an example. Like there's, because there's the old HTMLized version and mm -hmm. then there's the new RF, um, XML v3 HTML format. Does that one also get the metadata tags? I haven't seen updated by stuff in there, but it probably can. Yeah, so I mean, there is a link to the data track and stuff. So there is there is the stuff displayed, which is not part of the- That's true. Um, HTML, so. Yeah, it can take I'm you to sure. the info page. So yeah. there must be a way to do it. Yeah, so I, I guess I wonder, yeah, maybe we just put it 
next to data, you know, data tracker IPR info, you could have, you know, essentially another way to get to something that the working group experts or whoever can control to say, hey, if you want to actually go do this, here's here's the current information. Here's kind of the current list. But there is something we were talking to me about the IANA. I think it was you talking. It. If I'm not mistaken, a couple of young models are only appearing in IANA registry and not as an RSC. Cool. I need to check, right? I have this in mind. So it's very similar, right? I, I guess, are you, are you saying of like, how would that? Iana Yang model refer out to something else, or are you saying like that's a it's a no, 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 I mean, stuff it, 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 one difference, right? Is that there is a registry for all Iana models, all the revision of one model specifically. So the first mm -hmm. model is published in RSC, but the revision are kept by the Iana. Interesting. Now the code yeah. itself is within Iana servers, right? So it's not a pointer to something else. So it's a big difference. All I say, it's maybe a way to um, something to explore. So what would be good next steps um, is, is the uh, is the draft a, a useful way of, of capturing ideas and evolving this is a GitHub issue list? I mean, what, what, what do you envision? Um, so we do have our kind of EDM GitHub issue list and that's that's where I am adding some of these things right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I filed two. I'm going to file a third one here for just saying, hey, you know, should we add RFC document metadata to point implementation status? Um, and so, you know, there we can kind of collect our. different ideas of direction, but, you know, looking at these, I think there, there would be some work to do just figuring like, what is the right template to go off of it? You know, what should be even recommended to working group? And I think looking at stuff that quick has done that HTTP has done, or let's try to find some of these examples of existing implementation status collections and what works well about them and figure out, you know, can we come up with a kind of a, a recommendation for how that would work at that point, we can just, you know, kind of build the template, get people to start using it. We can, you know, document it if we want. Um, the parts about, you know, what happens to your GitHub after it closes, that sounds like an interesting thing we've uncovered that I don't know if that's covered at all. Is that covered at all in the existing Git working group documents? Um, does anyone know? I don't, I don't think so because it's like not like an authoritative source or anything in GitHub. It's just like some additional tool you can use during the lifetime of your of your working group. And when the working group closes, you just it's assumed you just don't need it anymore. And so yeah. So how do I file an issue against the closed? GitHub working group about how to use GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to quickly so, scan those documents to see if there's anything about closing. I, I did review when I was in AD and I can't remember anything about closing, but I don't remember all the words of all drafts. So. Ah, um, okay. So there okay. Isn't there... there's Go ahead, sorry. Um, I, I, I can throw it up on the display for a second. Um, so it says, when a working group is closed, the team with administrative access would be removed and the owner list would be returned to the secretariat and current ADs. So it sounds like, you know, it, it still exists 
currently it becomes Eric's problem since he's <laughs> over with the ADs. Um, yeah, I, I, but the assumption is, I think this is uh, that you it would not be used actively anymore. Um, it's just there for reference purposes. Right. So it sounds like if if we think it should be something different, we could you know try to have an update to that. Of and here's a process if you want to have some part of this that lives on maintenance. Okay. All right. What were we so, going to say? Uh, yeah, I wanted to say there is an opportunity to present some of this and start a discussion in IEP open in the IEP open meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, I think it would be useful to actually make some kind of proposal to have a few more details. Mm -hmm. that. I agree. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, the, this third part that we could talk about of like, hey, do we want if we have a place to put stuff, do we have RFC or document metadata that points you to it that we can actually decorate? That would you know, be more of a, would that just be something that we could do with you know, like the RFC editor and the tools teams? I don't know if that, does that need document yeah. to standardize or uh, is, yeah, we're going to add it. No, I think oh. we want some consensus about it, but I think it would be good to actually talk to Robert about this because um, we've been talking about changing metadata for this update update tag, right? And he had some concerns about tooling and changing these kind of stuff. So I'm not sure how complicated it is and how this is integrated and whatever and what that actually means. So it would probably be good to talk to Robert. Okay. Yeah, we need to talk to Robert, but I'm afraid we need uh, an RIC to change them, though. We can do that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's right, right? That's why we're here to talk about it. Cool. All right, I think this is a good uh, source of uh, um, dis discussion. I, I think it's you know something that would be definitely worth doing, and as you know, hopefully, Charles, since you're, you're doing all the work with Hackathon, um, if we can come up with, hey, you know, here's a good template for your working groups to use to help track this stuff. Um, it's something at the very least, the people working on within the Hackathon could start contributing to and help tie everything together and make it more discoverable. Well, in that scenario where we've made a lot of good progress with um, a lot of working groups now will have a bit of time for uh, hackathon projects to be shared in the working group, which right. is, is super valuable. It's nice that we we share them at the end of the hackathon, but oftentimes it's you know it's not 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 really your target audience, and so you can't go very deep on anything, both because you don't have much time, but also it's just not relevant to everyone. So, uh, but yeah, when you show it in your working group, then it's like, hey, those are the drafts people are reviewing, and it, it it's very helpful. So I think. There is that sort of tie between what the working group's doing and, and the hackathon. I think perhaps formalizing that a little bit with here's where your, how your hackathon projects fit into the working groups, you know, wiki pages, the data tracker, your GitHub, the mm -hmm. things that they're using in that, but that'd be helpful. Absolutely. So I don't know what a good format for uh, discussion in the IAB open meeting would be. Is it best to um, have a draft, like uh, uh, to have an updated version, say, of, of this draft where at least some of this stuff gets gets captured? Or um, it, it just seems like, you know, an internet draft is the best way to have someone look at something. Yeah. An internet draft is a fantastic way to get people in the IETF to read something. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, so if we want to kind of you know take this discussion, figure out how do we roll that into the draft, I think you know parts of what we want to do are not going to all be bound to a draft, but we can still have a draft that describes what we think should be done. Um, and... I mean, uh, I don't think it's necessary to have a draft for IAB open. If you have slides, uh, there will be discussions as well. So 
um, you can always have a draft, of course. But uh, if you if you if draft makes most sense if you're actually planning to publish something, and I think this is also maybe um, the what people might assume if you write a draft, then people might assume you actually want to publish it. So be careful there as well, maybe a little bit. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna say with, with the time frame of of the meeting, it would be uh, easier to put together some slides to talk about this than it would be to update a draft, to, you know, and having before the contribution deadline. Um, yeah, that's a good point because we only have like a week and a half on that. Yeah, so um, you know, we normally do have a, a slot there for updates on program stuff, so maybe. You know, this time around, you know, we'll just mention like, hey, use it or lose it, just going to RFC editor queue. And let's kind of dive into this topic about how do we, you know, discover implementations and have implementation feedback loops into working groups. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that might be a good way to get some people who, uh, I've been running those working groups that have some experience with this to get them involved in the discussion. And, you know, maybe if nothing else, we just kind of, you know, heard people, um, you know, for a future call even. Yeah. And the other thing I think we can do, which is worth doing, is like, you know, there's a working group chairs list and stuff. We could come up with like a little survey that we send out about, you know, do you track implementations? Do you want to? Do you, you know, and kind of figure out, you know, what are people currently using for this? Are they not using something? Would they like to use something? Um, and you know, how do they use what they know about implementations within the working group, either to help other implementations or to inform their own um, document process? So that's something we can build. So maybe, you know, Charles, if you want to just kind of come up with some slides to present this to a wider audience. And then maybe David and I can work on like, how would we send out a survey to working group chairs about like, what do you think? That that sounds good. I would love to get a feedback from like the wider community at ITS, right. see what people think. And yeah. uh, f f from there, we can kind of see uh, kind of based on a feel of the room. Cause in general, the people who care the most about process tend to attend IAB open. So that's the, I think that's the right place. <laughs> yeah. All right. all right, we have some next steps and we are also out of time. So thank you all very much and see you online and at 112. Which will yeah, also, also be online. See you all soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh.